Twelve years ago, I lived across the street from a church, and a few blocks away from a library. I lived in a townhome right next door to a seventy-two-year-old woman. I believe it's important to note a few things before I detail some of the concerns I have while living on Joshua Street. I now live on the other side of the country. Thankfully, Joshua Street is located somewhere in the high desert of California. I never had audio hallucinations leading up to the point where I moved there, nor did I ever hear anything out of the ordinary after I moved across the state. The seventy-two-year-old woman I lived next to was a very sound mind and able-bodied. She never once showed even a moment of mental fogginess. She had lived around the area for a long time, was retired, and left her house often. Her name was Hannah. The library had no alterations made to the building, or any that were made public or immediately noticeable whilst I was living there, and I went past it every morning on my commute. The church in question was modern, with no church bells, not inside, not outside, no bell tower, no bell speakers, no clock tower, nothing. It was not a loud church. So anyway, onto the story. Joshua Street was a typical-looking area for the dry, arid locale. We had no grass in our front yard, more like a cracked, sandy clay-like turf. With Joshua trees and other desert shrubs and plants scattered around my area, the town home was less than luxurious. But no matter how loud I played music or shows, or how loud my neighbours were, we could not hear each other, which was a plus. Hannah was a kind woman who I enjoyed talking to in the mornings, and sometimes came over to her home to have a tea and listen to her stories. A month into living at Joshua Street, I decided to move furniture around so that the couch was up against the wall that separated Hannah's townhouse from mine. Originally, my bookshelves were there, and I wanted to watch TV from a different angle of the house. This wasn't an issue during late night, but during the day, I noticed some strange sounds while sitting on the couch. I went to my bedroom on the other side of the room that shared the same back wall. And there was no sound. I looked over all the house for a source, and I eventually figured that it might be coming from the other side of the wall. Although Hannah is very quiet, I never received any noise complaints from her, nor did she tell me that she could hear anything when I played my music loudly, as I asked her to be polite, because this woman was old but certainly not deaf. Eventually, I figured I should put my ear to the wall behind the couch. Clearly, I could hear what sounded like church bells ringing. Needless to say, it creeped me out. Now, I'm not religious; I'm agnostic, so I didn't really know that much about churches. I thought it was strange that I could only hear the sound of bells from the wall, and not when I went outside to see if it came from the church. I shrugged it off and decided to ask Hannah about it next morning. The next day. I asked Hannah if I could come inside for tea, and she was happy to have me over. I took note that her TV was no way near the wall that separated our homes, nor any other kind of audio or radio equipment. This is because her kitchen is a part of that wall. I told Hannah about the bells I heard through the wall, and she told me she had no idea where the sound would be coming from. I asked her if she was watching televangelists or wedding shows, or had an alarm clock or loud timer. Although I didn't really believe that the sound I could have heard could have come from any of those things. This is when phones were not high tech, and didn't really have the capability to make high definition sounds. She said that she didn't watch anything of the sort, nor did she have an alarm clock. She joked about after living so long. You just wake up around the same time every day, and she said something that bothered me. She said that there used to be an old church on the same lot, and that the land was smaller than the current one. The modern church is very large, you see, and this old one had church bells, but she never heard any church bells since then. She informed me the church was rebuilt in the nineties, 
and she thought that maybe I was dozing off on the couch and had dreamt of the church across the street. I went along with it and returned home. The third night after hearing the bells, I decided I would go across the street to visit the church. At this point, I was pretty curious about it. Three nights in a row, and I found it would be at 6pm every day. Mind you, at the time I had no idea about the significance of the time. I would watch TV when I got home at around 6, and I would hear something faint and put my ear up against the wall. Gong. And I would listen up until either it creeped me out, or it suddenly stopped. I visited the church at around 5.45, and stayed there until 6.30. I didn't really want to be a part of the service, so as much as I wanted to listen for anything that sounded like the bells at home. Of course, there was no such sounds, and after asking the staff there about the history of the church, they told me the same thing Hannah did, and they also said they never decided to implement speakers or bells into the new building. Over the weekends, I began to notice other sounds through the wall, including the familiar bell sound. The bell would sound around lunchtime too, and eventually, I figured out this bell would sound at 12pm as well. This is from my journal. The bells sound at 12 now. I wonder if there is any significance to this, or maybe I'm just going crazy. 12 and 6. And now I'm hearing creepy music box sounds. Maybe I should just tell someone about it. They'd probably think I'm mad. Back in 07, a lot more people were going to libraries to do mundane things that many people today just do on their phones in bed. I didn't own a personal computer, and the Razer flip phone had terrible internet capabilities that you had to pay extra for. So I went to my local library with my journal and decided to do some research there. I quickly found that the church bells are traditionally rung at 6am, 12pm and 6pm. At this point, I wanted nothing to do with the town I lived in. I was in my bedroom sorting laundry, and I was listening to a YouTube video on my phone. I have YouTube read, so my phone was locked while the video played. I thought I'd heard a strange noise, and thought perhaps one of the dogs was getting into something. I had thought to myself, wow, I really can't hear over this radio, I should probably pause to listen. But my lazy ass decided not to, and I continued sorting laundry. My boyfriend was on dog watch anyway, so it wasn't my problem. Then for no reason whatsoever, the video just stopped playing on my phone and fell silent. It just stopped, and I chuckled to myself because I knew how strange that was. I took the opportunity to listen for the strange noise and heard nothing. I ended up checking to make sure the dogs definitely weren't getting into anything, because I thought that was a clear sign from the universe to go check. Everything seemed fine, so I resumed listening to my video and sorting laundry. This next one is when I was sitting on my couch in the living room watching TV. I had seen the dog going into the kitchen, and seeing as he's a five month old puppy, I didn't like when he's out of sight. I called for him to come to me, and instead of running out the kitchen like he should have, he came running out the hallway coming from the back bedroom. I know for a fact, I had literally just seen him go into the kitchen. This last thing happened this morning, and I'm still quite shaken up over it. On Sunday morning, I had woken up to find that neither my boyfriend nor I had remembered to lock the front door. So last night, I had double checked that the door was locked before heading to bed. This morning, I had woken up and did my usual, which was roll out of bed, plop myself on the couch in the living room to browse social media while I convinced myself to wake up. I lay there for 15 minutes until I decide to start my day. I sit up off the couch and look up at my front door. It's open about a foot. Surprisingly, my first instinct was to find the cat and make sure she didn't get out. I ran all over the place calling for her and then ran into my bedroom to wake up my boyfriend. At this point, my cat came out of her sleeping place to greet me, and I was relieved to see that she was safe. In my panicked state of mind, 
I had told my boyfriend what had happened, and he asked me if anything was missing. I'm not sure why that thought never occurred to me. He got up and checked all the rooms and closets to make sure no one had broken in, and we found nothing amiss. I have no explanation as to why or how the front door was open. I do wish to add one more thing that happened that was very strange. This happened about two weeks ago. I was just finishing up cooking dinner, and my boyfriend was going to go run to the party store to grab some pop. I was standing in the kitchen at the stove. Our front door is right outside the kitchen, and maybe 30 seconds after he left and shut the door, I saw the door start to swing open. I thought he had forgotten something and was coming back inside. My one-year-old dog was sitting right outside the doorway, acting a little excited. And after a few moments go by and I don't see him come through the door, this raises some concerns. I work up the courage to go look behind the door or the doorway, and no one's there. Thank goodness I have a highly trained dog, and she didn't run out the door. I immediately call my boyfriend and tell him what happened. We both kind of agreed he must not have latched the door all the way. After what happened with the door today, I'm not open to believing that something is just wrong with the front door. We tried playing with the door today just to try and recreate it happening on its own, but we couldn't get it to do it. I do however stand by what I said in knowing the door was locked last night. I was hiking in the woods with my friends in Eastern Europe. I want to keep this place anonymous. It was four of us. We were going on a week-long camping trip and really wanted to make the most of it, hike around the area and just have a great time, the four boys. We went out there and on the first day picked a pretty nice spot to set up camp. We brought our fishing supplies and we're going to do some fishing one of these evenings. We were all very excited. There were booze, and all the necessary junk food to ensure a great time. Now where we were camping wasn't too far from the car park, and we could very easily drive into town when we needed more stuff. We intended to explore, but not go very far. Anyway, on to the story. The first few days were great. We were buzzed, having a great time, sharing stories, and generally just hanging out with friends and being in good company. It was on the third day that we decided to pack up our stuff and go further in. There was a nice watering hole where we could fish in the evening and see if we could get any good catches. So we thought we'd try our luck. We set up camp nearby and started fishing. At one point, we really wanted more junk food and even though we'd moved campsite, it honestly wasn't that long of a walk back to the car park. I volunteered to go to the local supermarket, which should still be open, to pick up all the beers and junk food my friends wanted. I think it was about a 20 minute walk through the woods and then a 10 minute drive. So I would be gone at most an hour and 10, an hour and 20. It's not like the fish were biting very much anyway. So off I went. I got to my car and drove off into the town. Nothing eventful happened. I got to the shop, bought all the stuff, and started making my way back. One tidbit that I do remember is that the security guard was at the store, and he was frantically looking at his watch. It became very clear, to me anyway, that the shop was almost closing, so I was quite fortunate I arrived when I did. 11.50. I left the store, and it closed pretty much straight away, and I parked up in the same spot I was in before not too long ago. I grabbed my bags and began walking in the dark to where my friends were. Now to me, with all this extra weight, I think the journey must have taken about 25 minutes, as I did have to stop and break every once in a while. But when I arrived to the fishing place where they were, they weren't there. I went round to the campsite, and only one of my friends, Johnny, was there. I asked very nonchalantly where the other two were, 
as I put down the bags on the dirt and started rummaging through to open a bag of Doritos. He gave me a fierce look and asked me angrily what the hell I was doing, why I didn't answer my phone, and where the hell was I? I pulled out my phone and showed him. There were no missed calls. But at that moment, I noticed something incredibly odd. The time on my phone now read 4.40am. What? I looked at my phone and over to him, and said out loud, what the hell? I explained to him that I was there just before the shop closed, drove back and walked the 25 minutes with the shopping to get back here. He yelled at me calling me a liar, and we were having an argument about this. I told him I didn't know what to say, that that is honestly what happened, but that somewhere in between the drive, arriving and walking to the site, did I lose so much time? I genuinely am clueless as to what happened. My friends had even gone so far as to walk through the woods, call the police and start a proper hunt to see if I would show up. But there I was. My friends were informed, as were the police, that I had been found, and they came back pretty pissed as well. I did try explaining to them and said that if we would go to the shop in the morning, that the security guard and footage would be able to prove what I did. Not to mention that the beers were still very cold when I put them down, further proof that they had been where I said they were. They opened the beers tentatively, and realised that they were still quite cool, certainly not warming up for being in the warm climate and heating up for four hours. Everyone felt very uncomfortable. In the morning, we packed up our stuff and all went home, and never spoke of it again. I still don't know what happened that night. Part of me really does wish to know the truth, but another part of me thinks that maybe this should just be forgotten. Maybe there's something sinister or strange at work, and I just got off lucky. In any case, I try not to think about it too much, because it always gives me the heebie-jeebies. This happened to me just last month. I'm currently dog-sitting for my best friend, and staying at her house while doing so. Some context. I watch this dog every weekend for half of the year, and I'm over at her house all the time when my friend comes home. The dog is female, and she's very unfriendly to anyone she doesn't know. She'll literally bite people that she doesn't know very well, even if they've met a few times. Even with her owner and myself, she's often very standoffish, and will bite if she's in a mood. She's also not big into cuddling, especially at night and in bed. The dog is like a cat. You have to do things on her terms, or risk being snapped at. With that being said, she would not leave me alone last night. Around 3am I woke up to her insistently licking my face and trying to be close to me. I'd shove her away, and she'd just crawl back up to me and wake me up again. When I buried my face to keep from getting licked, she just dug into the covers to get close to me. She'd eventually leave me alone for a short while, after practically crawling on my head to sit as high on the pillow as possible, and pulling my hair by doing so. After several bouts of being uncharacteristically woken up like this, I thought that maybe she just really needed to use the bathroom. I reluctantly took her out, and went back to bed. Not long later, she woke me up doing it again, but this time whining when I'd shut her out, by hiding under the blankets, thinking that maybe the heater was on, or that I was scaring her. I turned it off, and with the heater no longer making noise, that's when I heard it first. It was a click-click sound of a dog walking around on the hardwood floor. It's a distinct sound, and one that I'm very familiar with. The thing is, the dog was in bed, 
Thinking I was just hearing things with the sound adjusting in the room, I ignored it and laid down to fall back to sleep. Once again, the dog kept licking me, whining and crawling all over my head. I was absolutely baffled, as to this point, I had been dog sitting regularly for over two years and had never seen her act like this. Normally, if an animal or person comes nearby, she'll go into protective growl mode. This was something else entirely. I sat up, looked at her, trying to figure out what was wrong, and that's when I heard it a second time, distinctly. Not only did I hear it, the dog heard it too. She clearly responded to the sound, whined, then nuzzled closer to me. I looked around the bed, but nothing was there. Realising that it was probably just another glitch, and not an animal that had somehow gotten in, I decided to return to bed. This dog, that usually never let anyone cuddle her for more than five minutes, let me sleep because I pulled her into a hug and stayed like that. I was absolutely amazed to wake up hours later to her still under my arm. Maybe we're both hearing a parallel version of her walking around, and that spooked her out. Normally, she goes into instant bark or growl mode, often frantically running up to the windows growling when she hears a raccoon or another animal outside. Whatever the case, I think what we heard in the room wasn't normal. Her reaction is testament enough for me. When I was 18, my mother kicked me out the house after she caught me drinking. I moved in with my estranged father, who lived in a 200-year-old house on the coast of western Michigan. In the kitchen was a door to the basement, where he had a studio that he spent most of his time in. He's a painter, and from the living room you could see around the archway and most of the kitchen. Anyway, I was sitting on the couch reading and listening to the radio when the DJ announced the date, July 2nd, the day before my grandmother's birthday. I looked up and saw my father in the kitchen wearing an old red and blue pistons hat and matching windbreaker and pants an outfit that I hadn't seen him in in ages. I called him and asked him if he had any plans for Grandma's birthday, because we hadn't discussed it yet. He had a stunned look on his face and seemingly backed up and disappeared. His reaction was a bit bizarre, but I wrote it off immediately, as he smokes a lot of green and sometimes acts strange or avoids me when he's a bit too into it. I got off the couch in an attempt to follow him, but when I made it to the kitchen he was gone. The basement door was shut and locked, but I hadn't heard the door close. A few hours pass and he comes back upstairs to make himself some dinner. I was a little ticked that he ignored me, and being young I rushed into the kitchen for scolding him for being rude earlier. I asked him why he wouldn't answer me when I asked him about grandma's birthday and told him that she should be more important to him, and him not responding made me very upset. He looked confused and told me he hadn't come home all day, that he just got back and came in through the outside door to the basement to carry some art supplies, before coming up and making dinner. I was about to call him a liar when I noticed his outfit was completely different. A ratty old white t-shirt, black sweatpants and a black baseball cap. I asked him why he changed his clothes. A little freaked out, but he told me he hadn't. I described what he was wearing when I saw him earlier, and he said that he threw the windbreaker and pants out about 10 years ago. It was his favourite outfit back in the day, and showed me what was left of the hat I was describing. It was practically falling apart in a drawer in his bedroom, which of course meant whatever it was I saw earlier was not my father. I must have had hundreds of spooky stories from living in that house, but this one really sticks with me. This happened a long time ago, back when I was dating my boyfriend Tim. 
I decided to visit him. We lived in separate areas at the time, and we had a good time. And after staying with him for a few, he brought up the idea of going to Land's End. Tim mentioned how it used to be a swimming pool next to the ocean, and that his mum used to go there when she was little. It had since burnt down, but had a nice view and an even greater view of the sunset. We had planned on going the next day, but Tim woke up late, so we went the day after. After maybe 20 or so bus rides later, we arrived. At the top, there was a path leading downwards. It stopped on flat ground with a path leading to the right, and another path continuing down. The path on the right went on for a little bit before it stopped at the mouth of a tunnel. Inside the tunnel was a path that led to the other side. While inside the tunnel, you could see something dripping and ocean waves. The path on the other side was long enough to fit maybe four or five people before it suddenly ended with a gap, disconnecting it from the continuing path on the other side. The gap was large enough that if you tried jumping to the other side, you'd probably fall or have a small chance of making it. On the other side, there was a wall on the right with rubble around it. Beneath us was a long trip down into the ocean. The downwards path continued before stopping on flat ground. On the left, there were broken walls, some curving, some straight with most being small and flat enough to walk on. Others were higher and took squarish shapes. These places were filled with shallow water. Tim and I first decided to stop at the higher area and look around. We went through the tunnel, enjoyed the ocean view before moving to the lower area to explore. We both walked around the area and explored some more walking on some of the paths to kill more time. As night approached, we headed back to higher area, as Tim mentioned the view would be better, and he was right. We were joined by a group of people, and we all watched the sun set in the sky. Tim and I decided to stay later to watch the moon, something I enjoy. As we stood watching the moon, more and more left, before we were the only people left. As it got later, we witnessed a sight. The moon was moving, not in the slow crawl it usually does, but more like it was taking a light jog across the sky. We both thought it odd and strange, so we decided to see if we could see it on the platform of the other side of the cave, so we headed in. We were using our phones to help lighten the area as we walked. I had noticed that the sounds heard from earlier were gone, and were instead replaced with silence. We came to a stop hearing a growling noise. We looked around with our phones, but couldn't find the source of the noise. It wasn't like a stomach growling, but more along the lines of an animal. We both ran out of there, and hightailed it back out to the walkway entrance. When we got back to the entrance, Tim mentioned the moon. Turning towards it, I looked at it in shock. Instead of being in a spot along with its jogging path, it was back to where it was before it started jogging. It was as if the moon had been reset. I'm 36 now. But the following happened to me when I was 19. A quick bit of backstory. I worked as a volunteer firefighter in a small West Australian town in the southwest. In addition to the normal volunteer firefighter ins and outs of attending incidents, I was also involved in the sports side of the fire brigade. This comprised of the individual and team events, and the fire brigade you belonged to was your team and across Western Australia, there were about 30 such teams slash brigades, and between October to April, we would travel and compete. We had travelled to Geraldton to compete in the state championships in 1999, and I, through hard work, 
had won the Champion Fireman Award and was at the hosting Fire Brigade's after event celebration and was enjoying myself with my team drinking beer and socialising with started around 5pm. While I admit I was pretty drunk, I was still travelling well as there were a lot of people and a lot of my time was spent talking to officials, older members and with friends catching up, so I had not really got my drink on yet. I needed to go to the toilet, so I just went around the corner and began to urinate in the garden like I had a few times before, and being the same for every other guy at the party. And that was when I got a phone call from an unknown number. Being away from the noise, I answered it, and I remember the guy asking for someone. I didn't know them, and ended the call after perhaps 10 to 15 seconds of, sorry, wrong number. I finished, and then went straight back to the party. When I was returned, I was in absolute shock. Everyone had disappeared. It was dead quiet. Every table and chair was neatly stacked, all the rubbish cleared and the lights off and the doors locked. It was just dead quiet, and not a sound could be heard across the town. I was very confused. I took my phone out, and it was just after 4am. What the hell happened? I checked through it, and my phone showed literally dozens of missed calls and 30 to 40 messages of people searching for me and looking for me. I called my mate and made it back to my hotel, and over the next few days confirmed with many people that I had been standing in a circle and excused myself to take a leak. And after I received the phone call, that was that. No one saw any of me that night. Where I urinated was where everyone was doing it so it's impossible that I could have been there unnoticed and a group of friends searched for me around while I was gone. I still don't know what happened, and I'm confused as hell. So about three or four years ago when I was still in college, I went over to my friend's apartment because we had a group homework thing to do. It got pretty late, but we got there maybe at 6 or 7 p.m., and it was probably around midnight or 1 a.m. at the time. All of us were smokers, cigarettes, terrible habit, back then. So we went down to the common area of the building, which had a pool and some seats to hang out. But more importantly, it was an outdoor area with no roof over our heads, to take a smoke break from all the homework, which had been mostly finished at this point, and just hang out. This whole pool area was completely deserted at the time except for us, but it was near the main entrance of the building and the only other person nearby besides us, as we were a group of five, was the doorkeeper of the building. In any case, now that I've set the scene, this is what happened. It was around 2.30 or 3am, and the sky all of a sudden got clear. And I mean not clear as in daytime, clear kind of like dawn, which was weird because in my city sunrise, it happens at about 5.30 to 6am. So it's definitely still early, and we all got freaked out. Even the doorkeeper left his station and came near us and said, it's really early to be this bright, right? To which we all agreed. It was far too early in the am for it to be this clear. And I mean, it wasn't like it suddenly became daytime, but definitely clearer. We could see shapes of buildings and billboards that just seconds ago were too dark to see. We all got freaked out, but not scared, so we just kind of talked about it amongst ourselves. None of us had ever seen anything like that before. It was no later than 3.30am when this happened. We stayed there until 4am, just talking and hanging out. Then I drove home. All this time it never got dark again, but I was in bed before it was normal for the sun to rise in my city, and never gave it another thought until I realised it could have been a glitch. I had never experienced something like that in my life before, and never have since. I went back to my friend's apartment and hung out at the exact same area at about those hours in the AM a bunch of times after having that over the next two to three years of college. None of us 
ever experienced anything like that day again. It is completely out of the ordinary, or normal for it to be as clear as it was at that hour in my city. I've never seen it happen again. It was 3am, it was pitch black a second ago, and then it got clear like you'd expect at 5 or 6, just when the sun is setting and it's starting to get dark. Fifteen years ago, my family and I went to a pre-Hispanic ruin at night to watch an announced planet's alignment. We went there because it's a rural place, and a one-hour trip from a major city, and there are no lights to bother you so you can star watch. Once there at about 10pm, we tried looking for the planetary alignment, but no one knew how to identify any planet, so we just watched a pretty starred night with two of my cousins deciding to follow up a hill trail to see what was behind it in search of the unknown, or perhaps something paranormal. We walked for about 20 minutes and found a house with dogs. They began barking at us, and we decided to return. That's all my cousin and I remember for the trek. Meanwhile, the rest of my family had a really strange experience. When they lost sight of us from the distance, they saw a light that moves towards them really slowly without sound, but with strong winds at ground level to move with it. When the lights reached above them, my mother and my aunt screamed, and everybody sheltered in their cars. They wanted to leave, but my cousins and I were still missing. Then, the light kept moving and was lost over the hill that they were trekking. My dad, my brother and my other cousin went up the hill searching for us, but couldn't find us. They waited a long time, and then again went up the hill for us. They said they also reached the house with the dogs, but couldn't find us. They came back, waited, and were very worried. Then we came down as if nothing happened. I remember my family were really worried, and asked us why we took so long, and then we just got into the cars and left as quickly as we could. I didn't know anything about why they were worried, and didn't ask. Some years later, my mother and my aunt told me the story, asking me why we took so long and if we saw the light. Just then I realised that the trekking for my cousin and I was about 20 minutes at best, but for my family, it was two hours or more. Last year, my girlfriend and I went up a bike trip through the trail, and I was expecting to see the house, but I couldn't find it. I'm planning a new trip there, to see if I can reach the lake. It certainly weirded all of us out. I was leaving a friend's house around 10pm, back in mid-December. I was sober and wide awake, as my plan was to go home and finish some quick chores left over from the day. We had heavy rain, and weird clouds all day. No lightning though. So when I was getting into my car, and noticed the cloud cover seemed to have bright red glows in it, I assumed it was the light from the nearby university refracting strangely into the thick clouds. I got into my car, and headed home. My house was a short drive away, seven to eight minutes tops. Suddenly the entire sky lit up pink, blue, green, and yellow, in rapid and repeating succession for 10 seconds. The lights seemed to have had no point of origin or bright centre, but was coming from behind the clouds as I could see their shapes in front of the flashes. The sky was evenly bright from horizon to horizon, and there was no relative noise. Then it happened again, random colours flashing brightly for maybe 5 seconds, then darkness. Then again, then 5 to seconds before it was totally dark once more. And that was the last time I saw it. I don't know how to explain this one. Near our house is a small greenhouse of a local tea company, which is often lit up with lots of wacky colours. And if the clouds are low enough, we will occasionally see the light very dimly reflected in the sky. I can't blame this on those, it was far too bright, too far reaching, and was flashing, not holding a steady colour. 
I also saw that recent video of the Transformer exploding in New York City. And this was similar, but what I saw was more than just bluish white. It was like as if the entire sky was weirdly coloured that day for a few seconds at a time. No centralised source of light like a blown transformer would give off. This really freaked me out, for probably no reason, but I definitely stepped on it the rest of the way home. I haven't seen anything like that since, and we've definitely had some similar clouds. I know lightning is capable of giving off unusual colours, but in rapid and changing succession like this? When I mentioned it to friends, they all dismissed it with a quick, weird. Any input into this would be greatly appreciated. It was last year, close to May, when I was feeling very, very anxious about an essay I had to give in a week from then. And as usual, as a way to prevent me from having an anxiety attack, I started reading a book on Wattpad. It was a mystery, suspense and romance book, which I remember was so unusual from being what I normally read, and it captivated me. I read anywhere. I could read on the bus, while waiting for the bus during class, taking a break, I even sometimes read while walking. And this book was so amazing that I couldn't put it down. Then it happened. On May 22nd, my class was scheduled to go to the annual National Book Exhibition, and I remembered that we had scheduled to meet for coffee with the entire class to show off which books we had brought and discuss the seminar which we had to watch about script writing and book writing and the difference between them. But I didn't go to the seminar. I sneaked away to a photography gala a few roads ahead and returned just in time for the coffee. There I was, so uninterested in the conversation, that I continued reading my book. In 48 hours, I had already ploughed through 103 chapters, and only had 5 more. I was sure I would finish by the time I was home, and I was right. I did finish, and even reviewed it, and I had a lengthy conversation with the author too. A week later, I got a notification on my phone that the author updated the seventh chapter of the book, where they had finished. I thought it was a Wattpad glitch, but as I checked it from both my phone and the computer, there were only seven chapters and not 108. I then went immediately to my chat, and our conversation was gone. I asked her if she had deleted the chapters, and she said no, and then I proceeded to tell her what I had read. She freaked out and asked me how I knew things, and I told her that I'd read it all. She didn't believe me. Biggies. I still see notifications about new chapters of the story, and I'm a little bit creeped out. Was it a glitch? Did I see the future? Did my subconscious go that far? Nothing makes sense. Back when I was a kid, early to mid-90s, our town was a bit smaller than it is now, meaning we sort of knew nearly every store or business inside it. We weren't a small town in the middle of nowhere though, it was a suburb of Baltimore and DC. I was around nine when I remembered clear as day that my parents ordered me this colourful wooden bed from a local store that sat in the same shopping centre as our main 7-Eleven. I would ask when the bed would come, and sometimes my parents would say very soon, but other times they had no clue as to what I meant. As years went on, I would ask about it whenever we would drive by the shopping centre, and like years prior, the answers were always mixed. Sometimes they would say, what bed? And other times, yeah, we cancelled it when we got the day bed. During my junior year of high school, I was taking driving lessons in the same centre with my cousin. When I told him about this, he would joke about it just being some fluke. One day while waiting to get picked up, we decided to go in there. And I swear the same man I remembered that sold us the bed was in there, not even aged. He greeted us, and I asked if they ever sold kids' beds. 
He said no, that they usually sell couches and the sort, and I told him about the bed, and he said he'd never seen such a thing. Fast forward a few years later, a high school friend goes shopping for a bed for her son. Where does she go, and what does she buy? That bed. The one I remembered buying but never getting. What's worse is she got it from the same store. I flip, because it felt like my whole life was a lie. I decide to go back to that store, this time with her since I knew for a fact she bought the same bed and that the damn man is there. This time he did look older but not by much. Anyhow, I ask him why he told me a long time ago that they never sold kids beds, when this girl just bought one. I thought my parents brought it for me as a kid 15 years ago. He proceeded to tell me that they have always sold kids beds and that the model she bought is one of their oldest selling. My cousin even remembers the guy saying that they never sold kids' beds. So I'm not alone on that. I still don't know what happened. I gave up after that. It was bizarre and freaked me out. I will swear to God that I remembered that bed, and I remember my parents getting it. That store is still there, with its same old sign, and I imagine, the same old man. I was on my way to the choir performance I had in a town on the other side of the country. I had to catch the sound check session because if you're not there, you don't perform later. Rules of the choir. I'm running a little late, so I'm driving just a bit over the speed limit, around 80. But the road is almost completely empty, so I figured it was okay, even though it was raining quite heavily. When I was merging onto the highway, I overtook a car that kind of stuck out from the rest. It was a dark green rover, with a Bosnian license plate, which is very rare in my country, and a little sticker in the back that looked like a logo of a fight club or school. It's a very specific combination. I'm driving on the right lane when a dark green rover passes me. It caught my attention because I was driving pretty fast, and I wanted to see who was in such a hurry to overtake me. As I was overtaking every other driver I encountered on my way so far. Okay, so the guy just caught up to me and passed me. I don't know why, but I remembered the last three numbers of his plate, and I still do. A couple of kilometers down the road, I see a pair of lights approaching in my rear mirror. So I moved to the right again. When it passes, it was the same car, same plates, same sticker, same brand, and same colour. And then it happened two more times. The last time was a bit freaky. I saw someone beginning to pass me and I thought, Hello Rover. And there he was. Two of the times it happened on a stretch that had no stops or exits so I don't know how it occurred, and never once did I overtake him except at the beginning. But here comes the good part. I'm driving back from the concert. It's pretty late, and the rain is pouring like hell, so visibility was bad. I was slowly driving home, and this same car passes me twice. I tried to snap a picture, as I was now expecting it the second time, but the first time freaked me the hell out. But due to the rain and bad phone, it didn't add up very well. All in all, the same car passed me six times. This happened three times, with three different people. I grew up in a two-story house in the Philippines. Upstairs there was a huge playroom and four bedrooms. When I was around 11 years old, me and my babysitter were hanging out in the playroom. She went to the bathroom, and I got bored. So I went downstairs to check out the fridge. I heard her come out the bathroom, and she started screaming my name. After the third time, she stopped. I thought she figured out that I was downstairs, and after a few minutes, I saw her coming down the stairs. As she looked at me, she froze and just stared at me. 
I asked her what was wrong, and she said she saw me in the playroom before she went downstairs. She was really freaked out about it. And I don't know, I used to not believe in these things, so I just laughed at her. The second time it happened, I was probably 16. I was hanging out in my brother's room, because it's the room with the fastest internet. And then I heard my six-year-old brother, as I have two brothers, calling me and looking around for me. I didn't answer back, and just waited for him to find me. I saw him go into my room, and then he got quiet. I thought he was looking for something, and just found it. As he was walking out my room, he saw me in my brother's room, and he just froze and stared like my babysitter. I asked him what was wrong, and he said, Why are there two of you? And that's when I freaked out and ran to my mum's room. She laughed at us, but I remember sleeping in her room that night. The last time it happened was when I was 20. My parents were on vacation with my youngest brother, so me and my other sibling had to stay at my grandparents' house at night. The first night they were away, me and my sister decided to go home and get more clothes. We were both in my room because she likes to borrow some of my clothes, and I told her that I'm going to take a shower. That's when she left and went to her room to pack more clothes. I went to the bathroom and started brushing my teeth. As I was about to get into the shower, my sister walked into the bathroom, and she looked at me so weirdly and her face turned pale. So I asked her what was wrong. She said she went back into my room and she was talking to me, but then she had to pee, so she went to the bathroom and found me here. We both looked at each other, grabbed our stuff, and left. I still don't know why or what it is, but it still creeps me out when I think about it. I live in a house with just my mum and my two sisters. We get on quite well. The house is fairly new and built in a decent area. So, onto the story. I was just chilling watching some cartoons and both my sisters were out. It was just me and my mum at home. My mum was probably working in the other room as I could hear her furiously typing away on her laptop while having a conference call via her phone. I was just chilling and thought I'd get up and get a snack, as mum hadn't even considered making dinner yet and it was already getting late into the afternoon. Come to think of it, my sisters had probably gone out to eat somewhere. Anyway, I was just in the kitchen getting a snack. When my mum opens the front door with shopping in hand, and my two sisters right behind her. I look over at them, incredibly confused. I swear my mum was just in the other room. How the hell was she coming back with car keys in hand and groceries in another, and my sisters in tow? I give them a confused look, and they walk straight past me and set the things down on the counter. And then, the creepiest thing of all. They were there, and then, in a split second, like in a blink, it's all gone. The door is closed, the stuff they placed on the counter is gone, and there's no one here but me. I shout my mum's name, and hear her reply, I'm on the phone! That was really weird, I thought. I run up to the door, and it's still locked. I go over to where my mum is, and she's still on the phone and giving me a confused and slightly annoyed tone. One that says, what do you want, can't you see I'm busy? I collect myself, sit down on the sofa, and try to pretend that that never happened. I'd never told anyone before, because I thought for a few moments I was going insane. I never did have that snack. Can someone please help me explain this? It's really weirded me out. 
I was napping in my childhood room in my old bunk bed around 5pm, which I share with my older sister. I'm napping in the top bunk, which is relatively close to the ceiling and against a wall. Walls and ceilings are a smooth blue colour. My sister is chilling in the bottom bunk on her laptop. We are 23 and 25. Both came home for the weekend for my brother's birthday. She answers the phone call, which wakes me up. I open my eyes, and all over the walls and ceiling are small triangles with rounded corners and dots in the middle. Each cluster of triangle forms a pattern of flowers, five triangles each, all the tips facing towards the centre. These flower clusters all lined up evenly and orderly covering my walls and ceiling everywhere. They weren't scattered randomly. The pattern wasn't a specific colour, translucent or transparent. I stared in shock, confused and amazed for two to three minutes, before shutting my eyes for three more minutes and opening my eyes to see they were gone. Now, to get into the details. I've had sleep paralysis before. This wasn't it. I was very much awake, could move, and even sat up to check out this pattern. I often have false awakenings too, but I assure you I was very much awake. There was no strange reflection of light, nor was the light shining in my eyes so that I could have imprinted a pattern when I looked around. The pattern stayed on the walls whenever I moved my eyes. It didn't move with my eyes. The pattern was so technical that it's why I explained it as a force field like. It reminded me out of something of a sci-fi movie. At first I thought it was my contacts, maybe they were dry because I fell asleep with them. I've never ever had that happen to me before, and I often fall asleep with my contacts. Plus, that pattern it was so particular. I've never seen that pattern anywhere before, but something about it was almost computer-like. Has this happened to anyone before? I'm just trying to figure it out. It's so weird, I just had to share it. A few years ago, I was just coming home from work, absolutely shattered from another gruelling day at the office. My boss Janice had given me a mother load, and I was suffering for it, with deadlines approaching. Now I'm not sure what this experience was, was it a product of my exhaustion, or something more? As I'm walking up to my building, I grab my keys as I usually do, swipe the fob, and open the door. The post boxes are on the left hand side, and as I go to my post box, I insert the key and flip. Inside there are a few parcels. I get them, look through my mail, put them under my arm, and open the next door to make my way into the concourse of the elevators. It was there that I push the button, and I look to see where the elevator is currently at. Floor 12. Great. It'll be a minute before it comes down. So I start to absentmindedly look at my envelopes, opening my letters, and seeing what I had received. After I was reading this boring document sent from work, did I hear the familiar ding of the elevator? It arrives, and I look to see who's coming out of it. The thing is, it was me. I was wearing a completely different set of clothes. I looked like I was going to the gym. The other me didn't even notice me. He just walked right past me, opened the door and left. I was so taken aback, that the elevator doors closed on me, and they went up to an even higher floor, and it took a while before it came back down. When it opened again, there was no one there. I was feeling incredibly confused. Was my mind playing tricks on me because I was so tired? Or was it something else? I got in the elevator, rode it all the way up, opened my apartment door, and everything was as it was. I still don't know what to make out of that day, 
but it's never happened before or since, and I'm glad to live without that fear. When I was younger, I used to go round my Nana's house to watch TV after school. She had Sky TV, and we did not. So I'd always want to get my fill of cartoons. I'd always ring her in the morning and ask if it was okay. Now I can't say for definite if I rang her on this morning. I feel like I would have done, but I can't be certain. So I go round and knock and nobody comes to the door. I try to open it and it was unlocked, which is unusual in itself, because my Nana's house had been broken into not too long before, and she was pretty good at ensuring its security. So I get inside and call my mum, to tell her that I'm at Nana's but that no one's home. She says she'll send my sister, as she must have been 17 at the time. My Nana only lives two streets away from my mum, so my sister got there pretty fast. I don't know how much time passes, but at some point there's a knock on the door. My sister being a bit of a wimp, she sent me. Now what's really strange is how you get to my Nana's back door. She lives in a terraced house, but is one of those streets where every ten or so houses there's a break for a little alley that leads into people's back gardens. To get to the back door you have to walk past the front door, go down this alleyway, through the garden, and up the back door. Also, the conversation went like this. Does your Nana still live there? Yeah, I'm her grandson. Oh, I was looking for your Nana. Now the way he spoke was kind of airy and confused. He didn't explain who he was, why he wanted my Nana or anything, and I don't remember how we ended the brief conversation. I just remember turning to my sister, who was cowering in the hallway, and her telling me he looked exactly like my granddad. I can see it all clearly, and he was his absolute double. Now the disappointing part. I can't remember anything else. I don't know where my Nana was. I don't know why her door was unlocked. I know my sister said at the time to not tell my mum, because she thought it might upset her. But looking back, it was all just so weird, because my grandpa had passed years before. We had a dog that was a bit too unruly to be kept inside. So he spent most of the summer on a lead, beside a large group of Forsythia up the hill that was our backyard. My brother and I were responsible for his food and water each day, and being brothers, it often became a race. It wasn't exactly fair for the one of us doing the water that day, but it was what it was, and occasionally ended with a full-out sprint down to the steps by the house, with flying elbows and shoving that somehow never ended in disaster. One day it was my turn to do the water. I filled the jug and went up the steps trudging up the walk to the dog's run. After emptying out the water, I began pouring into the fresh stuff and looked down the yard. My brother was about halfway up there with the food. I laughed and taunted him that there was no way he'd run the race today since I was almost done. He just shrugged and kept coming up, and went around to the far side of the Forsythia. Well that was odd, but whatever. I'd wait for him to come around and dump food and then start running. I liked the actual races. I finished with the water and scratched the dog's ears for a bit. I went in a bit deeper scratching and petting the happy pooch, but he never came around. He wasn't in the bushes, he never went back down to the house, and I eventually gave up on the joyful thought of sprinting down laughing at him while he poured the food in and sullenly marched down to the yard and inside. He was standing there in the kitchen talking to my mum. How'd you get back down here? What? Didn't you get the dog's food? No, he's been here talking with me. Why? Ah, uh, no reason. I'm pretty sure I saw the ghostly doppelganger of my brother, though nothing bad happened outside getting freaked out by it. 
I had not long passed my driver's test, and as an 18 year old, I was never not driving my car. It was late one night, and I had just dropped off a friend at his house. I was driving up a very familiar road to get onto the motorway. There were no other cars in sight, and my music was pretty loud. Out of the corner of my eye, I noticed a small black cat seemingly waiting to cross the road that I was driving on. It must have been about 10 meters ahead of me on the other side of the road. I was doing about 40 miles per hour, and I figured it would either wait, or even if it ran across the road, I would have passed it before it was in any danger. Just at that, the cat seemingly ran straight towards my car, and I'm 100% certain I heard a horrible thud of the poor thing going under my car, even over my loud music. This is when it gets weird. I stopped immediately. I adore animals and I was also quite distraught, to say the least, at the prospect of running over a poor cat, and indeed someone's beloved pet. I was also quite shaken, as I was relatively new to driving, and I knew my mother was going to be furious if I damaged the car. I get out and notice there's no cat. I checked thoroughly as I was pretty sure I'd hit the wee cat. I started to reassess what had happened here, and I looked over to where the black cat had been sitting before this horror, and the same black cat was sitting exactly in the exact same place I'd seen it on my approach, completely unharmed, sitting like nothing had happened. I went over to the cat to see if maybe I had hit it, and it was just stunned or something, but nope, the cat was perfectly fine and almost happy to meet me. I got back in the car and got on my way. It puzzles me to this day. I'm certain I hit that little thing. Thankfully, it was just some sort of glitch. I live in a condominium, and we own two apartments on the 7th and 8th floor. The only way to move in between them is to step out of the apartment, take the elevator or the staircase, and enter the other one. One night, we ran out of ice cream upstairs, and my mum told me to go get some from the downstairs freezer. So we took the keys to the seventh floor apartment, and since it was dinner time, there was no one there. I walked in the pitch dark, and realised someone was sitting on the sofa. So I flipped the switch to see my dad sitting there. It was kind of weird, but I just went to get the ice cream and asked if he had a key to lock up. No answer. I shrugged and thought, well, if he came in and locked the door behind him, he must have one. I went back upstairs and my dad was sitting there eating dinner. I freaked out and asked him how the hell he got up here so fast. And everyone gave me a strange look and told me that he had been here the entire time. I told them it wasn't possible, because I had just seen him downstairs, and no one believed me. I will now never go back down there alone. Just to make everything quite clear, each of our apartment doors are fitted with three types of locks. There's a gate which has its own keyhole and lock. We put another lock in it, so that you have to unlock this gate twice, and then there's a door and its own lock so you need three keys just to enter our house if no one is inside. I did get a good look, and it was 100% my father. He's kind of fat and has a serious looking face, so it's hard to mistake him. The apartments are not accessible, because not only are they not on the same floor, they aren't even located on top of each other. There's an elevator in between them, and they are on different floors so there's no way for anyone to go up or down without first meeting at the elevator or the staircase. Today I arrive at work, and do the usual when I get in. Go to my desk, set down my purse and clock in. Now everyone at work carries walkie-talkies. It's how we communicate to each other, because we are spread out throughout multiple buildings. Everyone has their own walkie and is labelled with their name on it. Part of my morning routine also includes grabbing my walkie so I don't miss it out on any useful information. 
We have a station where all the walkies are kept on charges at night. So when I go and grab mine, I check to make sure I've picked the right one. This is important to note, because most people might not double check this. But I have another girl who's got a similar name to me. It's only one letter off. Every time I grab my walkie from the chargers, I always have to double check that I have my walkie and not the other girls. So I know for a fact that I grabbed mine with my name on it. Now sometime later, I grab my walkie out of my pocket as I go to use it for the first time today and read the name on the walkie, Matt. Now Matt absolutely never uses his walkie, so it's always sitting on the charger. There's no way I just accidentally picked up his walkie talkie and misplaced it with my own, seeing it as he never uses it. I went back to the charging bay and sure enough, there's mine sitting on the charger. I know with absolute certainty that I picked my own up this morning. I physically picked it up and double checked that I had it with my name and not the other girls before putting it in my pocket. Ten years ago, I was returning home from a road trip with two friends. I received a phone call from my parents asking when we would be arriving, and I explained that we were around 25 minutes away. About a minute later, we come around a bend. It was a full moon, and we could see the reflection from the lake below us. And other than the road, it was completely empty. Suddenly, everything went completely dark in the car. No lights, no dash or gauges or headlights on the road. The music also stopped, and we started at the beginning of the CD we were listening to. There was now a vehicle pulled over by the police a quarter of a mile in front of us that hadn't been there a split second before. I assumed I had dozed off for just a second, as it was late. I thought it was still quite peculiar. After about a minute, the driver of the car turns the music all the way down and said, Did that just happen to anyone else? The other passenger, in the back seat, sat forward abruptly and exclaimed, I thought I just fell asleep. Then we realised that the clock in the car was reading an hour later than it had just a minute before. To keep ourselves from freaking out, we decided the car had possibly had a momentary electrical failure and reset the clock to an old time. We turned off the dash lights, headlights and gauges, restarted the CD player, but when we arrived home 25 minutes later, we were an hour late. I'm missing an hour of my life, and to this day, I have no idea what happened. The other day, I was walking back from the bus and walked down my street. I was sober, well rested, had eaten food and was wide awake. I had not been exposed to carbon monoxide. I noticed the houses were different and I started to think I had somehow walked down the wrong street. Though, I had seen the sight from my street when I got off the bus. I figured I'd walk to the main street and go back up my block. But then I saw my own address. I was confused. It was a slightly different house. A little newer, and it didn't seem to be a fourplex like mine. I didn't know what else to do, so I knocked on the door. A woman answered, and I explained I was looking for 1234 Myrtle Court, and she said that this was it, and asked me what I wanted. I said I was a little lost, and was she sure? She was getting suspicious and annoyed and said, of course, why? I stuttered something about thinking my house was here, and she asked if I was on drugs and threatened to call the cops, so I apologized and left. I was in denial. And at the end of the road, I noticed a taco place that isn't on my street normally. Usually, it's a few blocks away. On my actual street, there's a mechanic where there is a burger place across from it. I started to walking towards it because at least it was something normal. When I turned on the main street, things seemed to return to normal. I walked the few blocks down to my house, which was now there, and everything was in its usual place. I was so freaked out I avoided that part of the neighbourhood for a while. When I did eventually go back, it was the same number, but a different street, 
and the house looked different than the one the woman lived in. The taco place was on the wrong side of the street, and I had really just been hoping I was just turned around. So, some time ago, I came home, in our old family house, and when you walk into the front door, there was an armchair facing the TV, and to the left was a sofa, and my older brother was sat on the armchair, and I went to sit on the sofa. Brother's eye view was in my direction, and my mother was in the kitchen cooking. Next minute I heard my sister's voice screaming my name from upstairs. Yang, come here. I replied, I'd just be up there in a minute. She screamed at me to come up now, and I replied to give me a minute. She kept on shouting, and so I walked upstairs, and there was no one there. I was extremely confused and walked downstairs and asked my brother where Kim was. He said he didn't know. I walked into the kitchen and asked my mum, and she said that she had gone into town. The strangest bit is that I asked my brother if he had heard me shouting at her, and he said no. I'm still baffled by what went on then. Last night, I had a glitchy experience. I bought oregano oil capsules, and I take them before bed. I specifically took one out, put it in my mouth, and swallowed it and left my room. I came back to my room and noticed that there was an oregano capsule on my bed. Weird, I thought to myself. I just took one. So I put the capsule back into the bottle, along with the others, and left my room. I came back to my room after showering, and the exact same capsule was on my bed in the exact same place as before. I started freaking out, because I remember taking a capsule specifically, and also putting the one that was on my bed back into the bottle. There was no one home but me, and then when I was walking out of my room, I heard my mirror that was hung up on the wall fall off and hit my record player, and I thought, this is going to be messy to clean up. I walk back into my room and everything was perfectly in place and nothing had moved. Am I having a stroke? Or experiencing a glitch? This happened a few months ago. My wife and I went to the pool in our apartment complex for an evening swim, and there was a child with his mum there. Nobody else was there or in the pool. Now this kid seemed like he was a bit off, Autistic, perhaps, but what was strange is when he was near us in the pool, he gave off strange vibes. So there we were in the deep end, and this kid is on a styrofoam boogie board floating around us in the same area, making weird noises and staring at us. So we decide to head to the shallow end. I swam underwater for a bit and popped up when I could touch the bottom. But what happened next? is something I have never experienced. When I came up, I looked around for my wife, and she was nowhere to be found. The kid was still at the deep end floating around, and there was nobody but he and I in the pool. The kid's mum was outside the pool though. The pool lights were on, and I could clearly see the whole pool, but she wasn't there. I swear, for a good 10 to 15 seconds, I was looking all over the place. And suddenly, behind me, she was there again. Instantly. She said to me, I couldn't find you. I thought you got out or something. So for a brief moment in time, we couldn't see each other. And neither of us had gotten out of the pool. But we were both in the shallow end. Somehow. While the creepy autistic kid liked to float around in the deep end of the pool... It's not like we were back to back or anything. We would have bumped into each other or heard each other's movements in the water. Not to mention the fact that I spun around a few times looking for her. Honestly, we still can't figure it out. I live on my own and I'm the only one who has a key to my apartment. 
Two weeks ago, I left my place to go on vacation. I have a small black plastic coffee maker that came with a small black plastic spoon for coffee beans. I had it for about two months before I went on vacation. I distinctly remember this spoon, and it was black, just like the coffee maker. When I returned home, I couldn't find my coffee spoon anywhere. I checked all over my kitchen and apartment for it. That's weird, but I figured I probably accidentally threw it away or something. This morning, I tried looking for the spoon again, and I found a different spoon in my sink. It's a small coffee spoon, but it's white, and it also has a missing shape to the other one I had. I have no other appliances. And I have no idea where the spoon came from, and I don't remember using this spoon for anything ever. It's kind of insignificant, but it's driving me nuts. Maybe it was a white spoon all along, and my brain remembered wrong. Where did my original coffee spoon go? One Friday, my stepmom picked me up to take me to my dad's house. Like a usual Friday, we drove down our normal route home, which was through a wooded area which leads onto the main road, which we take directly to where my dad lives. Anyway, as we were driving through the wooded area, we were just talking, listening to the radio, where we came to an N-shaped road. Like I said, we were just chatting, minding our own business, when a car starts coming around the corner on the N-shaped road in front of us. With its lights at full beam, this is the middle of the day, so we can see clearly, and there's no need for headlights to be on. It seemed to be coming round rather fast, but we didn't pay it much mind. The road was very narrow in the woods, so as it approached, my stepmom pulled over like the normal procedure to allow this car to pass, just to look up and see it vanish from reality in front of our eyes. This freaked us out a lot. From what I remember from the car, it had its headlights on full beam and may have been a white color, and didn't look really old either, maybe 90s plus. This event happened about two years ago now, and I remember it very clearly. Last year, I was driving down the U.S. Route 90 in Ohio. Going to an old friend's house, we had driven out of the town that they were living in on unrelated business. On the way back to their old spot, 90W bound, we run into construction that was happening at the time on overheads. Pretty sure they restructured the fencing things or something along that route. Anyway, we are seeing the exit signs for Lorraine, and I think to myself, "Hey, a few more exits and we're there." Here is where the glitch happens. I see the sign again. Also, the route has a very, very slight right curve as you pass under said sign. I think to myself, "Didn't we just pass this?" And one of the other people in the car says, "Didn't we just pass this sign?" I respond with, "Yeah, that was weird." The third person in the car goes, "What are you guys talking about?" And for the moments, talked about the event. I haven't thought about it too much. Maybe just an instance of tunnel vision, but on every fiber of my body and everything I love, I drove under that sign twice that day, and I will never forget that. I used to walk some trails in a small park in my city. I was a fifteen or sixteen-year-old girl who loved the peace and quiet of the woods, as opposed. To the heckling of the street. One day, I go into my usual time after school at around 3 p.m. or so. I wander my usual route, and I should add, it's not possible to get lost because these woods aren't very large. I notice it's getting dark quite quickly, almost out of nowhere, and suddenly I get a call from my mum, who is flipping out and demanding to know where I am. She says that she's been calling me for an hour. I tell her I never received any calls, and I've been walking like I always do. She tells me that I've been gone for three hours, but I'm never gone for more than one. I check my phone, and sure enough, it says six. 
Somehow I lost two hours of my life in those woods, and I have no idea how or why. It felt like an hour to me. My mum's call was also never showed on my log, even though I should never lose service in there. Early one afternoon, my wife and I decided to head to the store. It was a clear and sunny summer day as we approached a one-way turn up ahead. We were 150 yards away, when suddenly we noticed the figure of a woman emerge from the road, moving oddly and seemingly putting on a dress. We deemed it odd. We figured they must have been down in the sewers and crawled out of the manhole. But upon reaching the end of the street, there was no manhole, only the solid pavement of the street. The woman, dishevelled and barely dressed, walked into an alleyway behind a strip mall. I'd seen this woman around town before, and she is very clearly mentally ill, often ranting and raving like lunatics as she walks down the street. But this kind of event fried my brain for a while. The whole thing was very surreal, as we clearly saw this woman appeared to have crawled out of the street, but there was nowhere she came from. It left us pretty unsettled, and we still are to this day. At our school, we have an upstairs and a downstairs. Well, I just got out of class and had seen a girl downstairs, and then went upstairs to sit where I usually do and she comes out the office, and this is strange, because she was walking somewhere else, and the only way she could have made it there was if she passed me without me noticing, or she went outside and up the ramp really quickly, and she had just a shirt, and it was freezing outside. This has happened another time with another person, I think the same day or the day before. In my class, I saw this girl grabbing some brown paper towels for a project we were doing, and then went to go get some, and the paper towel was white? So this happened about eight years ago. It's me and two friends in my car chilling in the driveway. We were talking and they were talking. I noticed this cat of pure white sitting 20 feet in front of us. Now my friend doesn't have a white cat, so I was intrigued. Five minutes or so pass, and the cat is still sitting in the same spot. I finally told my friends, Hey, what's up with this cat in front of us? All our eyes went to the cat, and it instantly vanished. We all saw it and began tripping out. One friend said it looked like it melted into the ground. I still question it to this day, and my two friends still remember that moment. I'll be driving in the highway at night, and it's mostly empty. Then I'll notice a car in my mirrors coming up, usually on the left side, but I can't say for sure. It happened on the right side too. Then I'll go back to watching the road before checking my mirrors again. But when I'll check, the car is gone. I hadn't passed any exits, and I live in a semi-urban area where there are usually barriers on the side of the road, so there's no way the car could have disappeared off to the side. It's happened multiple times. It's not a common occurrence, but also it's happened enough times that I no longer attribute it to my mind playing tricks on me. I wonder if anyone else has experienced this strange event. I've had a few moments that I feel fit the mold of a glitch in the Matrix. The first really big instance I can remember began so innocently. My then fiance and I were watching something on Netflix, probably The Office, when she got up to get a drink of water. We lived in a studio that was very well arranged for the square footage. The kitchen had a bar separating it from the rest of the living room, and a wall at the end of the bar that prevented you from seeing into the kitchen from where the couch was located. The bedroom didn't have a door, but it did have an entryway instead of just being open. My fiancé calls my name rather loudly for how close I am to the kitchen from my spot on the couch. 
She comes around the wall from the end of the bar with that giant nervous smile she always got when she was seriously freaked out. What's wrong, babe? I ask. Just come here. This is going to sound stupid, she says. She pulls me up from the couch and I follow her around the corner to the kitchen and up to the sink where she is pointing. Did we have one of those before? She says, pointing to a sprayer on our kitchen sink. A sprayer which definitely we did not have. It didn't even exist before she'd pointed it out. I feel myself go white, which may sound silly given that there was no danger. But I will tell you it was a very uncomfortable thought to know that something could just materialize like that. I pulled the sprayer out and tested it to see if it worked, and it did. I looked at Sandy and said flatly, Nope, it wasn't. I remember there being a little circular metal cover where one should be installed. And I'm pretty sure I asked the landlord if the sink had one when I saw the model unit. And he told me that it did not, but that he could have installed one if I wanted it. But he said that we could have one installed if we wanted it. I am sure I said something along those lines, but with a lot more stumbling around, as my thoughts were dumbfounded. I should also mention, no one had been to do any work on the sink at this point. Our garbage disposal broke a few months later, but there was no point at which a sprayer could have been installed. Sandy couldn't talk, and she began to panic. I sat down on the couch with her and turned on the show, so that she could have something else to think about while we tried to figure out another way to prove that we were both just completely spaced out and that the nozzle existed. It took me about 10 minutes to remember that I had taken pictures of the apartment the day we moved in, documenting any damage so that we would not be responsible when moving out. Surely there must be pictures of the sink there, I thought. I flipped through my gallery until I came to the first of the 20 or so pictures of our studio apartment. About halfway through where the pictures of the kitchen should have been, five or six of the images had been corrupted and were just black. No other pictures in my entire gallery had been corrupted, just the ones that should have shown our kitchen, and more importantly, the sink. I felt the color drain from my face even more, if that were possible. I explained to Sandy what I found, and she didn't believe me until I handed her my phone. That probably wasn't the best idea, because I spent the rest of my night comforting her. I will say, that around four hours later, she randomly said, Oh, I remember using the sprayer, and promptly stopped being freaked out. My honest opinion, given how stable my now ex fiance was, is that she could not handle the idea something so bizarre could happen, and fabricated a memory to ease her mind. That would not be the first nor last time she invented something happening to make her life a little easier. On another occasion, I was out driving with the same ex in the passenger seat. She had this thing where she liked to count how many dogs she saw in a day, which was admittedly pretty cute. Well, we saw this guy walking his dog. The dog was on a leash. We didn't get a good look as we were driving by at a decent pace. And as we passed the man, he passed behind a telephone pole just before an underpass. As he emerged from the other side of the pole, we both saw there was no dog with him as he came into view. There was a small wall alongside where the man was walking, and for the dog to have gone anywhere, he would have had to have run directly into traffic. Not only that, but the man just continued walking with no leash and no dog, and no panic of an owner or dog walker just having lost hold of their leash. We looked at each other wide-eyed, and I asked her if she saw the dog, and she said she did, as she was just about to count it as it was the first dog she'd seen that day. She described the exact same thing I witnessed, that when the man crossed behind the telephone pole, the dog went behind him, but didn't come out the other side. 
I'm sure everyone listening to this is aware of how hard it would be to miss a dog crossing behind a telephone pole. Even if it turned to line up with the pole, and why would it do that anyway? Anyway, I found it very disconcerting. I have three separate experiences to share. The first is when I was 15. It was an ordinary school day, and I was on the bus going to school. Usually I sit by the window and watch all the buildings that we pass by, so I happened to memorise the ones that stood out. One of those was an old grocery store that is right next to a pet shop where I bought my dog. I know that once I pass those buildings, I am five minutes away from school, and that I need to get ready. So again I was on the bus going to school, and it hadn't been 15 minutes since I boarded the bus, when I looked out to see that we had just passed by the grocery store and pet shop. I was stunned and confused. I didn't remember dozing off or anything. Looking around, I realised I was the only one confused, so I calmed myself down. Once I was done arranging my stuff, putting on my necktie and such, I looked out the window, and to my absolute shock, we were passing the grocery store and pet shop again. The girl sitting next to me probably saw my face turning pale, and asked me what was going on. Of course, I made up an excuse saying I suddenly felt dizzy, as I didn't want to sound crazy. The second event was at my best friend's house for movie night. It was a Saturday, and I planned on spending the evening with her and her brothers. Anyway, to get to her house, I have to ride a train. My stop was on the 12th station after I initially boarded the subway, and it was a bit of a habit of mine to stop what I'm doing every time the train stops so that I know where I'm currently at. I was on my fifth stop back, and then as usual, I turned my eyes from my phone to the doorway to see where I was. It was the seventh station. I waited for the doors to close, then I looked down at my phone again to continue reading. A few minutes later, the train slowed down again as it reached the next station. Once it finally stopped, the doors opened, and I realised I had reached my destination. I even blinked twice to ensure I wasn't seeing things, but sure enough, we were really here. I scrambled to get my things and ran out the doors, and when I finally calmed myself down, that was when the shock came. How in the world had I managed to pass five more stations without noticing? I told my friend about this one once I reached her house, and she mentioned that it was something like a glitch in the reality. It kind of annoyed me to see that this amused her, to know that I experienced something like it. But nonetheless, I ignored it, and we went on with our day. This third experience happened in my own home recently. I usually wake up early to prepare breakfast for my younger siblings, especially if our mum is away on business trip. It's my obligation as the eldest after all, and my youngest sister Mari usually wakes up at around 7. Just before I finish preparing breakfast, and she has the habit of asking loudly, what's for breakfast? That particular day I woke up extra early, but started making food nonetheless. I thought that if I finished early, I would have time to play video games for the rest of the day. I finished cooking around 6.30, and just as I was about to clean up, I heard footsteps coming down from the stairs. It sounded like the other foot was being dragged as the person walks, much like a zombie. That instance, I knew it was Mari. She's the only one who walks like that in the mornings. Sure enough, as if on cue, she asks from the doorway, What's for breakfast? My back was turned, but I still answered her. Eggs and pancakes. I know you and Dina like them. Then I heard a small humming response. When I turned to look a few moments later, there was no one there. 
and there wasn't a sign that anyone had been there except for me. A chill ran down my spine, and at first I thought I saw a ghost. But then I remembered what my friend had told me about the glitches in the Matrix. And I thought this was another one of those. It was nonetheless very confusing and creepy. My girlfriend and I have been together for about a year and never had any big problems. We are both pretty relaxed people and have never had a big fight, never had trust issues, the whole shenanigan. So one day I was out in front of my apartment building smoking a cig. This was before we lived together. I had seen her the night before, had a nice dinner and gone out to a bar, then gone to my place after which she took a taxi home. As I'm standing out in front of my apartment building, she pulls up in a taxi. I wasn't expecting her and was pleasantly surprised to see her. I put up my cigarette, smiled, walked up to her and said, Hey, what you doing here? She then scours at me, slaps me square across the jaw, and I'm dumbfounded and a loss for words. So I kind of just look at her. She never said anything, just barged past me into the building. I follow her up to my apartment, asking her what was happening. The whole way she goes up, she goes into my apartment, grabs her bag and some of her stuff she left there, throws a few things at me, breaking a glass or two, and knocking down a bunch of stuff on a shelf. She calls me a pig, says she knows everything, and that I've broken her heart. I'm trying to figure out what's going on, obviously. And she stops on her way out when I touch her sleeve, glares at me again, and slaps me. She tells me something along the lines of, I hope I never see you again, and walks out. I followed her to the street, and she got in her cab and drove off. The street was pretty empty, and this was about 8 or 9 a.m. I watch her drive off, and at this point, I'm lost for words, scared, and sad. Then as I'm watching the cab drive away, someone hugs me from around my waist from behind. I turn around and it's her, in running clothes. She was wearing heels and a leather jacket before, and I went completely pale. Hi, she says, in her usual happy-go-lucky tone. Then she noticed my look and said, What's wrong? I had spun around. No taxi. It had literally driven away five seconds earlier. No way it could have turned in that time, and all the lights were red. I didn't say anything to her. I just ran upstairs. Her bag was gone, the things were still broken, and my door was still wide open. So I told her. We were both momentarily confused. There's no way I could have mixed her up with someone else, and she's an only child. We had security check the cameras, and sure enough, me following a girl into my apartment. The angles weren't great, and the film wasn't great quality, but it was pretty easy to see me in my face, but hers was always hard to make out, and it looked a hell of a lot like her, but never a clear shot. No way it was the same girl. It still creeps me out and I don't really talk about it. We also filed the police report. They came, gathered up the broken stuff, and found only my fingerprints and my girlfriend's on them. Same as with my door. And this girl got into the building by herself. Which means she knew my door code. Her typing is on the footage. I just hope I never see her again. A little while later, I had a professor from Colombia who is a family friend, and we spoke about this situation hypothetically, and not wanting to sound the fool. He teaches something like philosophy, and other things to do with superstition and explaining the unexplainable. One of his explanations was very close to this. Somehow, a mirror of our world running a nearly identical timeline folded over ours or collided with ours temporarily. Maybe she saw me at the bar the night before with another girl, my girlfriend, 
not seeing her face, and decided to break up with me the next morning, come to my apartment, and then the amount of a disturbance that resulted in caused our two worlds to break apart right as she drove away. I'm not really one to believe in those things, but after this, I don't consider anything impossible. That also makes me wonder if it's true. How much did I mess up in this mirror world? Things can't possibly be the same there now as she broke up with me. I don't know. It's a lot to think about. This is the first time my girlfriend and I have gone into really thinking about this for a while. And it's scared and shaken me a lot. I like to be impulsive at night. And I don't mean break into buildings impulsive, though I have been there too. This time it was just to go for a long drive, clear the thought kind of situation. Me and a friend hopped into her car and drove out of town in an effort to end up in the middle of nowhere, which isn't hard living here in Australia, as most of our landmass is just forest land and desert once you leave civilization. So plenty of space to find yourself lost in. We kind of expected to get lost part way through the drive, of course. That's half the fun. What we didn't expect was after driving through Cali North, we found ourselves in the middle of nowhere, on a road caged on the sides by snow white trees that often looked to be glowing in what was extremely low moonlight. I noticed that we left Cali North at like eight at night sending out texts to loved ones on my friend's phone for her. We were getting somewhat crap signal the entire drive, but it hadn't dropped out yet. And when we hit these white trees, the signal dies. Messages are now unable to send. Even Spotify perishes, despite the fact we downloaded the songs onto the phone. And suddenly the road begins looping in perpetual S-bends that we couldn't shake. Generally, I follow a rule of driving at night. That is, if weird stuff starts to happen, you don't just turn around in the middle of nowhere. So I tell my friend to look for a driveway or some kind of invitation to turn around rather than doing a U-turn right there and then. While in this looping S-Bend drive, we see a sign in the trees. I think I saw it at least eight times over. Who knows how many? I couldn't count. The sign was old and mostly rotted away, carved out to say, Touchwood. And now looking for it, I can't find any sign of a road or place called Touchwood at all. We eventually do find a spot to turn around, not far from the sign. It actually looked like it appeared from nowhere, considering we'd been apparently looping for about a half hour now. After turning around, we manage to get out of there, head back to Cali North, and our signal returns. Thank goodness. Everything comes back on our phones. Signal, Spotify, the works. And we find out that a half hour spent in the loop was apparently four hours. It's past midnight by the time we even return to our town. Both of us are weirded out, and somewhat excited at the same time. But like... I've spent over half my morning looking at satellite images of the region, scouring Facebook groups of the area and such, looking for this Touchwood place, and the road we were on doesn't seem to exist. Nothing about the trip was normal. The S-bend looping roads that never stopped, and the sign repeating itself every few bends. And, of course, the four hours of lost time. Unsure if we drove into a pocket dimension or something, but we were very much freaked out. In February 2018, I decided to renovate my kitchen. It was a remnant from the late 80s slash early 90s, chosen by my grandparents, as it was their house originally. I couldn't afford a complete refit, so I research decorating techniques and products that I have gained enough confidence in using in order to tackle the job myself. 
I'm a fairly anal person, organized to the nth degree, so when I removed the cupboard doors, I made sure to put all the screws from each door inside the cupboard I had removed them from, so I had every single screw accounted for. I did my cleaning and decorating, very pleased with the outcome, and eventually, it was time to put the cupboard doors back up. I was alone, and thought I had no trouble putting the doors back on, since I had been the one to take them down in the first place. I picked up the first door, and glad to see I still had all my screws lined up where I had left them. I struggled to get the door lined up, since I was balanced on step ladders and the hinges which I had left attached to the cupboards for convenience. I decided they wouldn't lined up and sit them where they need to go. This struggle made me drop the screw in my hand, and I heard it hit the floor. From that height, it should have bounced, but I didn't hear that second thud, and it should have made it on the linoleum. There was nothing on the floor to obstruct its fall. I had cleaned everything from that corner of the kitchen, so I could get on the stepladder and put it inside safely. So, there was nowhere for this screw to go. I put the door down and searched everywhere. It wasn't where it should be, which confused me. I searched in the sealed alcove that used to house my undercounter refrigerator. Over the floor, even under appliances across from the other side of the room. In case of some miracle that it rolled that far, but I found nothing. Writing it off as yet another strange occurrence, I decided to use another screw from a cupboard I had yet to renovate, thinking that I would buy a replacement at the DIY store later. My work was interrupted by a phone call from my mother, who often calls me on my days off, and after a little chat, she asked me how my decorating was going, since she hadn't seen my efforts for a few days. I told her I was putting the cupboard doors back on, but I lost a screw, and she went a little quiet. She then began telling me how she had just emptied her washing machine that had just finished its cycle. It's a routine for her to put all the clothes the right way out when she pulls them out of the washer, before placing them on the drying rack. And when she put her hand in her sock to pull it the right way out, she pulled a tiny screw out of it. I joked and said my screw had gone to visit her, because it definitely wasn't here on my kitchen floor. And even though she couldn't understand how a screw had ended up in her washing machine, especially in a sock she had worn the day before, she said if I could use it, then I should. And she saved me the screw, so I didn't have to go to the shop to get one. I wasn't convinced it would be a useful screw, but agreed. So she came to visit, as she only lives two streets away, and when she put the screw in my hand, my gut turned over, and the colour drained from my face. It was the same size, with the same amount of rust, and I triple checked to make sure I had every other screw, and I did, and nothing could explain how a fairly specialised size of screw could end up in my mother's sock in her washing machine. There was only one explanation. It was my screw. I live in New York, and have done for a number of years. I spend most of my free time in Central Park, to the point where I could be dropped into any part of it, and know where I was, and find my way to any other point in the park without issue which is why this is so disturbing. I was walking home in the evening from the west side of the park. I had to walk directly across a wide open field to the east side of the park. No winding paths, no obstructions to get around. Just walk straight across some ball fields while looking directly at a distinctly ugly building on the east side. I walk for about 15 minutes towards the distinctively ugly building, which puts me on the east side of the park. I pass some guys playing baseball, and a playground with a big concrete climbing thing, and walk a few more minutes, 
an exit on the street. Immediately I know something is wrong, but it's so bizarre that it takes me a minute to figure out what. The park is on the wrong side of me. Sure enough, I look up and the sign says W a hundredth. I'm back where I started. Feeling incredibly disoriented and all around confused. Okay, that was weird. I must have just spaced out somehow and gotten turned around. Back into the park I go, and this time I make it a point to keep checking that the distinctively ugly building on the east side is in my line of sight and concentrate. I walk halfway across the field, checking the distinctively ugly building. I walk past the same baseball game, distinctively ugly building still good to go. I walk out of the field onto the path, past the playground with the climby thing and follow the path out of the park. My heart sinks immediately. W 100th Street. I'm now legitimately freaked out. I can't decide if it's some weird house of leaves kind of stuff or if I'm having some kind of blackout and neither idea are comforting. I try to logic it out and figure out where I could possibly have turned around. And I can't. I didn't walk back past anything. Not the ball players, not the playground or not the field. I seriously consider just taking a cab, but suddenly feel sympathy for every idiot horror movie protagonist because I just have to know. I walk into the park again, retrace my steps exactly, keep my eye on the distinctively ugly building just like last time, and walk past the same baseball players, the same as last time, onto the path and just past the playground with the concrete climby thing. I follow the path out the park, and I'm on E 100th Street. I still have no idea how it happened. I've never been able to replicate it. Logically, there must be something weird about the line of sight or the little stretch of path leading out. Less logically, Olmsted was a creepy wizard who created portals and I took a quick stroll through the twilight zone. When I was 18, I worked at my uncle's gas station. On Fridays, I would do the overnight shift. The story starts off with me by myself in the gas station. It's the middle of winter and it's about 2 a.m. Winter season is extremely slow. I haven't had a single customer in over an hour. I start to clean the store and make some coffee when a customer stops at the pump. The guy gets out. It's a short Italian guy wearing one of those Puma tracksuits with a wife beater under it and sporting some bling around his neck. He was driving a dirty old little car. I have no idea what type it is. And I just say to the man, how's it going? What can I get you? This is New Jersey, so I have to pump the gas. The guy reaches into his back right pocket and pulls out a money clip with all $20 bills in it. He looks at the price, then down at his money and begins to count. I say again to the man, what's it gonna be? He looks up at the price, down at his money and finally says, I'll have 22 bucks of the regular. While I was putting the nozzle into his car, I thought to myself, that's weird, $22? He clearly had plenty of money to make it even, but in the end, why should I care? So as the car was getting its $22 worth of gas, I followed the man into the store. I stop at the doorway just to keep an eye on him and he goes directly to the cold drinks, stops and stares at the first cooler in front of him. Then he looks to his right, then looks to his left, then turns around and walks out to his car. I was like, okay, weird, but by now the gas is done. And I walk up to his car and then the man asks, how much do I owe you? I look at him with a confused face and say, 22 man. He says okay, and gives me two $20 bills. I give him his change, 
and then he goes on his way. Not two minutes go by, and I get another customer. It's an Indian guy driving a really nice SUV Porsche, and he's wearing some really nice looking clothes. I meet him in his car at one of the pumps. As he's getting out, I greet him and ask him what he wants. Now in this moment, I had that sense of deja vu overcome me. Because he started doing everything exactly the same as the Italian guy did. When I asked what he wanted, he simply reached into his back right pocket and pulls out a money clip with all $20 bills. He looks at the price, down at his money, and I asked again, but already knew the answer. He looks at the price, then his money again and says, I'll have $22 of the regular. Now at this point, I'm kind of freaking out. It feels like an episode from the Twilight Zone. The guy walks into the store, goes directly to the cold drinks, does the same thing as the Italian guy did. Looks right, looks left, turns around and walks to his car. I'm thinking to myself, is this really happening? By now the gas is done. I rack up the nozzle and the Indian guy asks, how much do I owe you? I say with a gasp, 22 bucks. This happened about 11 years ago, when I was working as a logistics operative in a warehouse in the UK. I worked with a good bunch of people, one of them being my mum. She helped me get the job there, and as we were very close, I enjoyed working with her. The warehouse we worked at had shelves upon shelves of products, which lined the length of the warehouse, and it had a walkway through the middle. Off to one side was the packing area for products that were ready to be shipped out to customers. I was in the packing area on this particular day with the rest of my colleagues and was facing the shelves. I glanced up and saw my mum walking down the walkway and she was looking at me. I smiled, but she didn't smile back and just kept walking with a blank expression on her face, which is not like my mum at all. She's a very happy person, everyone likes her, and like I said, we're very close, so there's no way she'd look at me without acknowledging me. I look at her, with confusion sprawled all over my face, still watching her walk up the walkway away from me, and everyone. Apart from the non-expressive look on her face, I remember thinking something else wasn't quite right with how she looked. There was something different that I couldn't put my finger on. Her eyes, they looked hollow, like I was looking into a dark abyss. I looked down for a split second to the job I was doing behind me, through a door that you have to have a keycard to open. At that moment, my mum walked in. I was so confused. It wasn't possible for her to be walking through the warehouse, and then, be behind me in a matter of seconds. I would have seen her if she had tried to go past me. There was no other way around. I asked my mum where she had been, and she said she'd been with the customer service team upstairs for the past half hour, trying to sort out a query. My face must have said it all, because my mum asked me what was wrong, but I didn't answer. I sprinted down the warehouse all the way to the back, looking down every aisle, but found no one. I got back to my mum as she asked me again, and I told her exactly what I'd seen. She was creeped out, but she believed me. Nothing like this has ever happened since, and it really freaked me out. It still does to this day, and I have no idea what that thing was, but all that I know is that it definitely wasn't my mum. I was sleeping with my girlfriend in her grandmother's house. This night, she was crying, because her grandmother had been acting very mean to her. So I woke up from bed and tried to go downstairs to speak to the grandmother. I had to cross another room to get to the stairs. When I got in there, the place was dark as hell. I couldn't find the light, 
and couldn't see my own hands. After a few steps, I couldn't even see my girlfriend's room, even though I'd left the door open. So I made my way to the opposite wall, where there should have been a door. But all I touch is wood. No furniture, no door. Only wood everywhere I put my hands. At this time, I saw some grey smoke from the corner of my eyes, at the place where a mirror should have been. I started freaking out a little bit, and I decided to go take my phone into the bedroom to make some light. I couldn't see the bedroom, so I followed the cries of my girlfriend. I couldn't call her, because she was trying to sleep. The cries get louder. I find a door, I turn on the lights, and I'm not in my girlfriend's room. I'm in the stairs, at the exact opposite place I was supposed to be. This made no sense according to the directions I took in the room, and the source of the cries. So I go downstairs to speak to the grandmother. Then I go back upstairs. This time the room wasn't so dark anymore. I could clearly see the furniture and the door of my girlfriend's room. Strangely, there was no wood. The walls were now stone. I really didn't know what all the wood was when I touched it before, since nothing matched the surface I felt under my fingers. I get in bed with my girlfriend and she asks me, why did you sleep in the other room? I haven't, I said. Don't lie, I heard you in bed with the mattress squeaking. Turns out, she felt like I had left for far longer than I had, and she couldn't see the door of her own bedroom during all this time. The day after, we tried to investigate the room, but there was definitely no wooden surface. We asked the grandmother who told us several people had died in this room, as it's a very old European house. She'd also fallen unconscious twice in this very place, one year ago to the day. This happened some months ago, and I still can't explain what happened this night. When I was nine years old, my dog died of old age. She was a 14-year-old German Shepherd, and she had been on her way out for a while. Her name was Holly, and she loved to hang out with my dad in his room. She was relatively small for her breed, but she was still very playful. When I was 11, I woke up to hear a dog panting in my front yard. It was dead silent in the middle of summer, and I looked outside to see a German shepherd standing out my dad's window. How funny, I thought, just like Holly. I go outside to see the dog and it's almost overjoyed to see me. Very happy dog for meeting it the first time. And this dog, felt the same way about my whole family. This must just be a coincidence though. I'm curious as to why it chose our house to walk up to at 7am though, and we contact the owner of the dog, and he starts making his way to our house to pick up his dog. Here's where it gets creepy. This dude lived far away. He told us that his dog had run away a few nights ago, but he didn't think she'd come that far. It was only a few towns away, but that's still quite a distance for a dog to travel. We asked the owner what the dog's name was. Holly. We started laughing. We told him we had a German Shepherd called Holly. When we asked her age, they told us she was two, and she was born right after our dog died. We're baffled at this point, so we tell him the story. Everyone seems to think that the whole scenario was a big coincidence, and that it was really funny that it happened. But I always wonder, if Holly came back after that day, in order to hang out with us one last time, or if it was just some dumb, lost dog. Many years ago, I awoke after what was easily the most vivid and detailed dream I'd ever had. In this dream, my life had simply gone on and on. I got married, moved, changed jobs, had a house and kids, and nothing was out of the ordinary. Then suddenly I woke up, 
and I was back in my small Boston apartment, lying next to my girlfriend, and it was like a huge part of my life had never happened. The closest way I can describe it would be the feeling you get if you woke up one morning and found yourself wherever you were 15 to 20 years ago. Everyone you'd ever met in those years never existed. Every life achievement you had was a lie. Every memory was false, and your entire life had instantly rewound back to a random moment many years in your past. I was so shocked and traumatized by this that I remember waking up and sobbing uncontrollably for hours, like I was grieving for the death of all my family, which in a way I was. The unexplainably bizarre part to me was how mundane this dream was. Nothing dreamlike or surreal happened. It felt absolutely like real life. The only difference was the time scale. In this dream, the time elapsed and was easily at least 15 or 20 years. To this day, I can still recall bits and pieces, including vague memories of my family's face, and I start to feel like I'm going to cry again. And sometimes, I can also start to get emotional at the thought that someday, I may not remember anything of the dream at all, and all those people and life memories will be gone forever. I'd never had anything like this happen before nor since, but it's still one of the most deeply scarring events that's ever happened to me, and one that I have yet to explain or understand. My wife has a freckle on the palm of her hand. It was just under her left thumb, about the size of a pea. I loved that freckle, would kiss it, name it, joke around with it. We've been together 20 years and got married back when we were 21 in 1994. About two months ago, I was looking at her hands and her freckle was gone. What happened to your freckle? What freckle, she says. I get a little freaked out, and say, the one you've always had on the palm of your hand. I grabbed her hand and looked closely, and there was a faded scar where the freckle was. She tells me that she had a freckle there, and that she had it removed about a year before she met me. She said it popped up really quickly, and that it freaked her and her mum out, because it appeared so fast, and they had it removed and tested for melanoma. It was negative. I remember that freckle, people. I remember kissing it and touching it when I would hold her hand. Like I said, this happened two months ago. I cannot shake the feeling that somehow my consciousness slipped sideways into a very, very similar universe to the one I started out in. But I feel like the people around me aren't really the people I used to know. It's very disconcerting. And if I didn't have really awesome compartmentalization skills, I could see this as really driving me crazy in short order. We arrived at a Canadian roadside camping ground in BC. When we got there around 10pm, it was full of people. Big trailers, big four-wheel drive cars, some RVs, the whole list of usual suspects. Nobody seemed to really know each other. It was just people like us traveling through. We had a long ride behind us, pitched our tent and went to sleep. We set an alarm for early the next day to maybe catch some early wildlife and get on the road before everyone else. The alarm was set at 5 a.m. When we woke up, the entire campground was empty, not a trace of anyone. No trash anywhere, but then again, it is Canada. And when the park ranger came around to collect the overnight fee, we asked him what was going on. He looked at us like we were seeing ghosts. He didn't see anyone except us. They might have left the campground before we did all quiet like, but we're both light sleepers, and that's unlikely. To this day, we can't explain what happened. When I was in middle school, starting seventh grade, 
my sister told me she ran into Rudy, who was wondering how I've been, and if I was coming back to our middle school after summer. I had no idea who Rudy is. My sister thought she knew him. My friends knew him and apparently he was one of my best friends, but I didn't know him. I met him for the first time in seventh grade, and he just kind of hung around with me and became part of my friends. My friends didn't seem to not know him and treated him like he was part of the group. My sister said that he told her of the times my best friend and I, and him, hung out at the pool or played video games. I recently asked her if she had ever seen me hung out with him before seventh grade, and she said she didn't know, but that he knew so much about me and even recognized her as my sister, that she assumed that we were friends. I honestly don't know who he is. I lost contact after freshman year, but it's always creeped me the hell out. Maybe I was friends with him and completely forgot about him, but I seriously doubt that. Who the hell is Rudy? I live with my boyfriend and his parents. There is a large bay window where the walls round out into the kitchen. The sliding glass door is close to it. So you can see through this sliding glass door, a small stretch of wall, and then the bay window. My boyfriend's mum and I got done talking in the kitchen for a while, and she went upstairs to have a nap. I looked out the sliding glass door from an angle, and saw his mum in the exact same outfit I saw her wearing in everything, walking from the side of the house out to the yard. The small wall was blocking my view, so I went up to the bay window to see where she went. No one was there. My boyfriend was coming down the stairs, so I had him check, and literally no one was there. No explanation. Nothing like this had ever happened to me before. I'm creeped out, and now can't sleep. <laughs> 